and welcome to Salesforce's Release Readiness Live for Spring 17. Thanks for joining us, whether you found us in the beginning of your day, the end of it, or anything in between. I'm Mike Torres, and it's great to be here as we take a look at some of the greatest features and developments that Salesforce's Service Cloud has to offer. Now, as a final point before we get into the presentations, we are going to be looking at some of our roadmap items today. So to properly set our expectations there, let's review Salesforce's forward-looking statement slide. Now, if there's anybody who's unfamiliar with this slide, it urges Salesforce customers to remember that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and that any and all purchasing decisions should be made on currently available functionality only. I think we have some more to cover in terms of Omnichannel, so I'd like to pass things over to Porvi. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Puri Srivastav. I'm a product manager here at the Omnichannel team in Service Cloud, and super excited to show you what we have for Spring 17 release, both for Omni and Live Agent. Gotham talked a lot about Lightning, and um, I'm truly excited in our roadmap to bring Lightning to Omnichannel, and of course, to use the only for Lightning <laughs> hashtag. Uh, but right now, for our Spring 17 release, let me just quickly jump in for highlights. So really very, very excited about the two GAs that we are doing for Spring, which is our generally available features for our customers. With Omni Supervisor, we are giving our customers and our contact centers the ability to take real-time decisions with real-time data. Now, whether it's the agent availability, it's how many uh, items are pending in a queue, or just looking at what your agents are currently working on, that's all possible with the new Omni Supervisor console. Moving to omnichannel routing for Live Agent, uh, this is one of my favorites. It's making omnichannel so powerful. Um, we just onboarded Live Agent, but we are going to scale more uh, with the newest edition uh, Live Message that David is going to talk about in a bit. And really, what it brings is um, the capabilities of Omni, including um, the sizing and the prioritization, and um, the changes that you can make to your um, Live Agent chat transcript object to Live Agent. So it's going to get more powerful. And one of our cool features this release is the default overflow owner, um, something that's really close to me as a product manager. Um, so while we work on increasing uh, Omni limits every release, and we are committed to um, uh, scalability. The proof is uh, we are going to a 30K total waiting for Omni with our spring release. But we do also want to provide our customers a guarantee that their data would be saved when um, they hit the Omni limits. So a default overflow owner is really a small setting that you can do in your consoles. And whoa, that will work just like magic. That's clever. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show a live demo, um, but really, a uh, really cool feature. And then we are going to continue to enhance on chat with uh, providing the active hyperlink capabilities and allowing everyone to save transcript on iOS devices. So um, I remember my father once told me that a live slide is worth 100 words, but a live demo is worth 10,000 words. <laughs> so I'm going to skip right here into my first demo. And I'm going to kick off uh, with a really connected experience. So we are going to use Snap-ins, which is also going GA with the spring release that Michael is going to talk more about. And then right move into Live Agent and Omni routing, and then show all that data in Omni Supervisor. So let's jump right into the demo. So what you see on my screen is really the Omni Supervisor. Um, I'm going to move back and go to our client website here, which is Sue Supply. Um, my husband is a huge fan, and I'm sure um, a lot of, cu of our customers use Sue Supply. So what I'm going to do is um, it's my fifth wedding anniversary, and I have to buy wow. a suit for my husband. I didn't really like Louis. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Um, but uh, since I'm not very decisive with all these things, uh, I'm going to help uh, find help with a stylist. So what I just did is um, entered with our Web Snap-ins product into uh, this help request. And you can see this product is really customizable. The branding works awesome. The colors, the pre-chat APIs, or, or the overall branding of the window is very easy with snap-ins. And I'm, I'm sure Michael is going to take you through the setup. Um, so I'm going to go back to our agent console and see that request in the omnichannel widget. So I'm going to accept that request. And that would open up a very connected 360-degree experience in the console. Um, usual capabilities of Live Agent, but what I do want to draw your attention to is the Live Agent chat transcript object, which is now getting created on initiation as opposed to at the end of the chat. 
what that opens up is a lot of possibilities if our um, customers want to track events while the chat is still going on. Another capability is um, the real need to prioritize your chats. So if you have chats on your website coming in from different buttons, um, for example, if you think a, a authenticated user is more on priority for you than a guest user, you can do that because you can prioritize chats coming from different buttons because it's not on Omni routing. But the favorite benefit that I want to highlight here is really the ability to see all that real-time data that we talked about in the Omni Supervisor console. Uh, so what you see here is the agent's view. And one of the biggest benefits of Omni Supervisor is these slices of data, the agent's view, the queue view, and the work view. But you cannot not only see the data, you can take actions. Now, we want to empower our supervisors. You can change the status of your agent if you think he's too busy or they might need some more time. Right from supervisor, you don't have to step outside supervisor or go old school with uh, flying planes to catch attention. Uh, but I do want to highlight that we are going to make it more powerful. We are going to provide more admin actions. And I'll talk a bit about it when I go to the roadmap. The other thing is. Um, the ability to drill into these queues and see your current work item, the chat that I just um, accepted from the Suite Supply website. But my favorite, again, is the agent timeline view. Um, so I'm going to go to agent timeline view, select a date where um, I was working in the console a lot. And what you really see is not only what status I had been, what work I was working on, but also the work that I wasn't able to take up because of my capacity. And that, again, opens up huge possibilities, including um, taking this data and uh, connecting it to your scheduling system with workforce management in the future. So that's really very, very powerful. Really quick, um, we have the queues view, too, where you can see what is pending in your queue. And as we get into the roadmap and talk about admin actions, we are going to, again, make this uh, very powerful. So that was uh, one of the first demos. Uh, I'm going to move real quick back to the second demo here, which is about my cool feature, um, the default overflow owner. So let's quickly get into the setup and see how it's super easy to set this thing up. So you go to your routing config in the Omni setup node. And here, I've actually provided an overflow assignee. You can either use a user or um, non-omni queue as a default owner. And what I would want to show you is the limits. So for the purpose of this demo, I set uh, my arg limits really low at 5. And you can see that I've used all five of my capacity. So I'm going to go into the console, create a new case, and see if that case gets assigned to an omni queue, which it should in the normal course. Um, but since I have a default overflow owner set, it would instead go to the default overflow owner. So let's do that real quick here. So I'm going to change um, the owner here to a uh, Omni queue. And you can see magic just happened because it got assigned to the default overflow owner. And I didn't have any um, case assignment rules or any triggers. So this is actual magic. Um, so super excited about this feature. You guys should try it out. Um, uh, there's no harm in trying it out. So that's all for the demos. Now I'm going to go quickly into the roadmap slide. And what we're focused on for Omni and Live Agent is really four broad themes here. Um, we're going to make Omni routing more powerful as we are adding more channels. But our focus would be for the next three release releases on skills. So we want to make uh, Omni available both from the queue side and from the skill side. And it's going to get better when we add proficiencies, either at the skill level or, e or at a binary level. Moving on to Omni Supervisor, uh, we, of course, want to bring parity with the Live Agent Supervisor for our Live Agent customers with our chat-specific features like whisper monitoring and flag raise. 
Um, but we also want to add admin actions, which I talked about uh, um, when I was showing the demo, like uh, changing queue from the supervisor itself. And again, uh, for our customers who have different BPOs in the same org, we will provide the visibility options so that you uh, don't end up seeing somebody else's data. Uh, with Live Agent, um, it's really opening Live Agent up for third party routing and enabling our partners so that we can build this connected ecosystem. So that's one of the priorities for Live Agents uh, in the coming two to three releases. And then finally, I'm super excited about Lightning. Um, we're very, very focused on delivering Omni uh, widget, Omni supervisor, and then the chat experience on Lightning. And hopefully, you will see me in the next um, release readiness talking about it. Yeah, I think this is going to be fantastic for all the capabilities that you've uh, walked us through today and what's coming up. To see that in Lightning, I think it's going to be a killer experience. Uh, I'll also say that so many of our CTI partners are looking forward to the third-party routing piece. Right. Uh, I've heard a lot of requests around that. So it's great to hear that uh, not only is that routing being unified, but also uh, the chat transcript is being created before the chat comes in, right. which means that you can now play around with that uh, and route it more intelligently. Yeah, I, I think we essentially we're bringing a lot of platform capabilities to Omni yeah, absolutely. as it becomes a central engine for most of the channels that Salesforce supports. So, yes, truly very excited um, and um, ready for questions. Great. Elna. Okay, well, I'd, li I'd like to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite trailblazers, Cheryl, out there, who says that agent timeline is Badass. That's a direct yeah, quote. I agree. Uh, we'll all second that. <laughs> like that. Thank you, Cheryl. And Cheryl also had a question. She was wondering, will Omnichannel eventually replace assignment rules for cases? Um, so there's essentially a little bit of difference. As a PM, <coughs> I hope it does, but <laughs> I'll give I, I'll give the right answer. Um, Omni is more of a push model, where case rules, I think, is in between push and pull. So what Albany would provide is always the capability to agents who are OK um, with this intelligent routing system. But um, I think case assignment would still exist. So it's really a coexistence of two different strategies for us. So you could choose one or the other? You or could both. choose one or the other, like really providing this capability to our customers to decide what's best for them. It's always good to have choices, right? Yeah. Um, one, one use case where I think that differentiation uh, starts playing out is uh, for certain models where you don't have capacity, uh, and especially for users that are offline, that might be default users, you will right. always have the assignment model, uh, whereas Omni really shines when you do have agents live that are working and uh, you want to make sure that they are at capacity and uh, utilization. Yeah, that's a good use case. Actually, now I think about it, maybe the cool feature that I just demo for the default overflow owner would work better with case assignment rule. <laughs> it's always good to have Gotham who has so much knowledge on um, on the console side. So yeah, really the the choice to the customers. All right, question from Sharath. Regarding the default owner in Omni, is it possible to route the cases again after the limit has been reduced? Yeah, so... Um, once the default overflow owner has the cases um, and you increase your org limits or you just clear up the queue, you can reassign those cases back to the queue and route them. Do we have time for one more question, Mike? One more. Okay, let's do one more from Reba. Are case assignment rules available for routing configurations yet or are they on the roadmap for Omnichannel? Um, I would say they are on the roadmap, something um, that we are working on to make Omni more powerful. I can't put a release number to it, but that's something we are aware of and are working on it. 